Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome to another in our series entitled Competitive Edge, where we interview innovators in marketing that bring a new dimension to their craft to drive better results for their clients. Tonight, I'm talking to Yoni Moseson of a marketing firm called MindPrintMarketing.com. Yoni, tell me a bit about yourself. Hi there. Well, it's fair to say I'm a product of my upbringing. I spent most of my early years at big New York ad agencies, including Ogilvy. I worked on uh, accounts like American Express and uh, Citibank and Crest Toothpaste and Apple. And I truly believe that that's the best classroom you could ever attend if you want to learn strategic thinking. And that's, of course, a discipline that I brought into my marketing company. And although we do a lot of uh, technology and healthcare, we actually do a little uh, nonprofit just to balance things out. Tell us about the name MindPrintMarketing.com. I could best explain it with an example. Many years ago, I had an assignment for writer trucks. I worked at big agencies. That was one of our clients. They wanted an ad to sell off their used trucks. Well, if you really want to reach the guy making the purchase decision, you have to get into his head. You have to feel what he's feeling. He's scared. I mean, if buying a used car is inheriting other people's problems, imagine buying a used truck. You're plunking down eighty or $90,000. So when you understand these emotions, you have a mind print. When your marketing validates the emotions of that person, that's mind print marketing. In the case of Ryder, I wrote an ad that sold all their used trucks. In fact, they had to pull the ad because they were getting angry phone calls demanding to buy the trucks that they saw in the ad. Before you buy a used truck, make sure it's been checked at least 9,112 times. The text of the ad documented exactly how we arrived at that number based on the rigorous ongoing maintenance program from day one. Can you give a a few examples? Sure. A very charitable individual set up a domestic abuse hotline, which started in Brooklyn. We eventually helped that organization grow and spread across the country. Anyway, she hired therapists, set up a call center, posted messages asking anyone suffering from domestic abuse to please call. She got zero calls. She came to us and said, I know there's a problem out there. How come no one called? Well, we interviewed the therapist. We reached out to people. We researched the area. And the headline wrote itself. It's hard to call a domestic abuse headline. It's harder not to. When we spread this message around Brooklyn, they got a flood of calls. Why? Well, they told us why. They said when we saw that message, it felt that that you knew exactly what we were going through. If I call the hotline, I'm admitting to myself that I really am in an abusive situation. If I don't call, I'm asking for the abuse to continue. So our marketing campaign validated the tough choice they had to make and the emotional consequences of admitting to themselves that they're in, a, they're in an abusive situation. We created enough of an emotional bond to allow victims of domestic abuse to trust Shalom Task Force and make the call. That's what mind print marketing is all about. It's not easy. You got to dig to find that mind print. Sometimes it's an obvious one, like with the trucks. Sometimes it's complicated. But when you find it, everything else flows. It just writes itself because you know exactly what could interfere with getting your message across. You know those emotional baggage that you have to overcome, and you know how to do it. Here's another example from technology. It's about building a mind print in making a trade show booth. There's a company called SnapKeys, which figured out this amazing way to type on your smartphone with one finger. Solves a lot of problems. The problem is when we spoke to the big telecoms like AT&T and Sprint and Verizon, they're all interested, but they were worried about 
the learning curve. They thought if it frustrated their customers, their customers would be angry and wonder, why did you embed this technology in my phone? It makes me feel stupid. I can't do this. So that was what we heard. Okay. The mind print then came along to solve it. We came to a big trade show booth, CES in Florida. And before then, we trained fifth graders on how to use the technology. And we only allowed fifth graders to be on the trade show booth and to interact with all the potential customers. As you can imagine, the tech blogs loved it. Let me show you what that looked like. Again, I'm going to share my screen. Putting those fifth graders there. We took away the whole emotional issue that might, might have been a barrier for them to adopt this technology. In fact, the learning curve issue never even came up. Let me show you how a mind print can take interesting twists and turns. There's a biotech called Oral CDX. They discovered a way to prevent oral cancer. They have this painless brush that dentists use if they see a spot on your tongue or cheek. By brushing the spot, it's actually taking a sample, which gets sent to a lab. If the spot has precancerous cells, it can easily be removed, and the patient never gets oral cancer. That's a big deal. You just saved your patient from an aggressive and disfiguring cancer. So you think dentists would be demanding this technology so they can save lives. Nothing doing. The mind print had covered a fear among dentists. They are afraid that even mentioning Anything to do with cancer will scare away their patients. How do you convince dentists that their fears are unfounded? That patients are actually grateful that such an aggressive and disfiguring cancer could be stopped before it starts? Well, we ran this very successful campaign, and we had two objectives in mind. The marketing campaign encouraged patients to go into the dentist's office and ask for the test, which they did. That, in turn, was the best way to get dentists to realize that their patients aren't afraid of getting tested. In fact, they're afraid of not getting tested. The mind print recognized the fear of the dentist and created the perfect situation that would alleviate the fear. Thank you, Yoni. That was really interesting. Thank you.